Hello, this is Mike Lively. I'm going to finish up making a terrain. Now let's review a few things as we move along here. In order to make the mountain, in a sense, go down or create a valley, you want to hold down the control right mouse button. In order to make a mountain go up, create a mountain, you want to hold down the control left mouse button. Let's demonstrate that real quick. And then I want to say one more thing about texturing. We, we added our first texture last time, and I want to review that process. So once again, making a mountain, hit the terrain editor right here. And make sure you click on paint, and once again, hold down the control right mouse button to make a valley, right, and the control left mouse button to make a hill. Well, that's pretty cool. And we'll go ahead and remove that to go back where we were. And to remove, you can just hit control Z, we'll take you back. And control Z. And we're back to our original terrain. At this point, I want to just once again review uh, adding textures. So let's go back to uh, the uh, terrain editor. And what I'm saying is, what's happening here is you actually are creating layers. That's the whole process. If you're familiar with Flash, this is very easy for you. Creating layers is just what we always do in Flash. So here's your height map layer, and you created your first terrain layer, and you're going to create another layer where you put a t material under this material. Now let me show you. I once said this is a layer. Inside that layer, you actually have kind of a terrain too, which we call a holder for the material. You can actually see that uh, that all graphically illustrated here. So let's now add our second material. This is going to be our underneath layer. And we're going to right click on this and create a new layer. We'll just hit uh, new terrain setup layer. So we've got a new layer. We'll call this back one. Hit OK. And we're going to right click again so we actually can have a layer, in a sense, a holder inside that layer. Let me show that to you. So right now you actually don't see an arrow pointing to a holder. So let's go ahead and create that holder so we will right click again on anywhere on the screen and we're going to hit new terrain material make sure you select the layer or you'll get an error so that's the layer we're going to actually put it on so once can right click and add new terrain material and we'll just call this back to and you see your little pointer occurs right here so it wants to put a material in there now but there's no material though, so if you click on that, you see there's nothing there. So we need to add that material, and this is how it works. It's pretty easy to do. So let's go ahead and go to our, our editor, and we'll bring up our uh, uh, content browser. And in our content browser, you can see back one and back two. So if you right-click on back one and you look at properties, and you see uh, within the material, actually back one holds back two. You can see that right there. So we need to go to back two and actually add the materials. So hit back two. Let's hit right click and hit properties. And you can see back two has nothing in it. So we need to add a material to it. So with back two selected, let's go to the content browser and choose a material for that. And you can see back two is selected, so that's cool. Let's go ahead and go to cool materials. Let's find some fire material. Here's some fire at the bottom. Let's go ahead and click on that. And let's uh, go to that properties panel and hit add. So once again, bring up for back to make sure we bring up that properties panel. You can see there's nothing there. So once again, make sure that that material is selected. Click on it and then hit that little green button to add. And then after a few moments, it should add. So the material has been added and you now have a fire material. And what that fire material is, it's underneath the other material. So let's take a look at that. Go to Terrain Editor tab. And you can see there's actually two layers, and the back is under the other one. So it actually can paint that layer on now. So what you want to do is make sure that paint is selected, and make sure that material that you want to select is selected as well. So that's what you want to actually paint on to the second material. So I open that up, select that fire material. You can see that right there. And now I'm going to hold the Control key now, and I'm going to paint that fire onto that surface. And it pauses just a little bit. It starts to processing, and then it knows, hey, I'm going to start painting fire. So there's some fire right there. Let's put some fire at the top of the mountain right here. There we go. And just along the edge here. So we've got some fire uh, second surface, for example. And now we're actually going to run the program and see how it looks. So what I want you to do here is come along and hit Build and hit Lighting. Let's uh, take off the Use Light Mass. Cool. And close that. And let's right click and play on the PC. Play from here. And there you have it. You've got your little environment here. You still have your mesh. You haven't taken that off from the editor, but there's your fire right there. Isn't that pretty cool? Let's see if we can find our... There's our mountain there with fire. That, that's a pretty, pretty cool effect right there as well. And you can shoot. And you can burn.
Okay, let's go back to the terrain editor. Here's our terrain editor. Let's remove that wire mesh so it's not there anymore. And let's run the program again. Play from here. There you are. They're pretty cool. Full game environment without much programming. That's pretty cool. And look how neat this fire looks. Can't beat that. All right. Just a few points I want to make here before I close up. Uh, there's a number of things that we can do here that we can actually do in paper vision. So let me go ahead and outline those for you real quick. This whole idea of actually morphing and changing surfaces can be actually easily done in paper vision, but hasn't. And so we'll be trying to pursue that as this goes on. I actually talked about this in Chapter 8 of my book, so let me take you there real quick. In Chapter 8, I talk all about terrain modeling and height maps and how to do it. And I actually built a little simple terrain modeler in 3D. And at the end of the chapter, I actually build a uh, prim modeler. So what we need to do with the book content is actually extend it so we get more of that um, unreal feeling in paper vision. Okay, that's one modification we need to make. Another thing we need to do is, once we've modeled in paper vision, is actually save those models and create compression algorithms, which uh, we use as well. So. Uh, here's my wish list and it's growing and we're going to keep it growing and as we move on the, the book we're actually going to be building these uh, things so once again today we'd like to think about terrain and object modeler inside of paper vision and see that double layer you think that's hard to do well in paper vision or in flash there's all these blend modes and you can actually use a blend mode to get the same effect that you saw by painting fire but instead you're painting blend so we'll continue with this series next time thanks for listening this was Mike Lively